when Master Evil comes to play. And Mama says that it's okay. Alex and Josh are stolen. Well, the computer came back on in my shitty dungeon, and I can see you two assholes. So that means season three started, right? Yeah. More shitty movies. Whoa, and less time with Alex. Hello, how are you? Um, still a prisoner over here. Uh, I've been locked up the entire two months since season two ended. Uh, so, not that great. Getting ready to watch a movie? Is that popcorn I hear popping? What? That would imply you give us popcorn, and there's there's no literally no noise right now. What's your name? You know our names. You've held us prisoner for two seasons worth of shitty movies over and over and over again. Why are you asking us our names? I want to know who I'm looking at. Josh and Alex! You're looking at Josh and Alex. We are literally on a Skype call right now. I'm looking at the screen. We can see you, you can see us, and you already know who the hell we are. Ma! They aren't playing along! Now, now, Josh and Alex play along, or tonight will be a double feature. Oh, oh God, no. Okay, my name is Alex. Okay? And I'm Josh. I'm Josh. Uh, nice person uh, on the phone. What do you want? I want to play a game. <laughs> Hi, Jill! I'll go grab it! You moron! Don't get involved! I don't want to sit through a double feature either. I gotta get my teeth pulled tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm so excited! Wow! You are evil! I like games, though. Alex, for the love of God, get your clown under control and let's do what Master Evil wants. Clown! No more karaoke night if you don't stop. <laughs> now, Master Evil, what kind of game? The game of cancellation of one of you. Now, Josh, answer this question correctly or Alex dies. What's your least favorite Shitty movie. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. If he doesn't guess correctly what his own least favorite shitty movie is, then I die. He's the one answering the question, not me. This makes no sense. Josh, please, for the love of God, don't mess this up, man. Uh, um, obviously, he's calling. He's being nice, getting mad, popcorn, uh, favorite shitty movie. Okay, the first one's good. Second one's not so good. Four is good. Screen three. <laughs> oh, God. Correct. Now watch and suffer. Open the vault. We're entering another dimension. A dimension. Of shittiness. You said another dimension. That's the only dimension we ever enter during these episodes. <laughs> That's on the show. This is definitely a screen movie. It's oh yeah. Screen. Every screen movie uh, has always started out with a helicopter flying over the Hollywood Hills. So that's how you know. Oh, cameo, original movie guy. Leave Schreiber. Schreiber. You think you think his sister is Claire Rivers from uh, Final Destination? 
No, but th- this is Sabretooth, man, before he's Sabretooth, and he's on the world's <laughs> largest car phone. And he's got a cell phone, too? Wow, man. Robert L. Jackson, instead of being Ghostface, he could have worked in, like, a you know, one of them non- 900 sex lines. No, because it would always go off the rails, because instead of trying to get them to climax, he'd be trying to murder them. That might hurt business. The vo- Listen to his voice, what he can do with it, though, man. I didn't know he was that talented. Just, just imagine that person telling you what to do. You're right. Then they would, then they would, you know, ask you. They get to scary movies, and it all, you all go to hell. You're right. We know how well he's doing, though, in his life at this point, because he has a car phone, which was probably <laughs> like a hundred dollars a minute back then, and a cell phone. And this is like pre Nokia. This is two thousand. There's, there nobody had cell phones. The only person who had a cell phone was the drug dealer at your school who used to have a beeper. I had that number written down. It was the same as my uh, lock combination. Oh, he's going to have to hit timeout like Zach Morris and pull out a third cell phone, the big antenna kind. I got a question. How do the previous... Okay, how do the new killers in these films know what the exact voice is of the previous killer from the previous two installments? They watch the movies. Oh, there you go. There's a twist for part six. There's been like a mastermind killer since the beginning, and everybody else has been patsies for him that he put to work for him. Billy Loomis's mother's mother is the one who is actually doing all the plotting. John Goodman, get another Roseanne character. DJ. DJ always looked like he was going to grow up to be a serial killer. That would work. It'd be more, it'd be more believable if Darlene was the murderer. I'm going to throw that out there right now. That's why the voice was always the same. Because uh, there's there's been another killer there from the beginning. And that's uh, that's why they're still keeping it in the continuity. Okay, so she's one of those gals who doesn't wash her hair every time she takes a shower. Her hair wasn't oh, oh, wet. Oh, see her. She picks up the phone. Dude, he's yeah, driving... He's got- He's driving like Anne Hayes right now. Jesus. I guess he spent all of his money on phones. His vehicle wasn't that flashy. He's like, he's like, I spent all my extra money, excess income on phones, car phones, cell phones, and three-piece suits. Uh-oh. Why don't you just, why don't you just pull the cord out? It'd have to be a vandal, too. It's going to be a killer. He's driving like a Dexter mobile. You think he's trying to kill somebody? He's got all that room in the back there. Why the hell does he need an SUV like that? Because he needs to have more room in his SUV for all the other phones he's going to buy in the future. Uh, it was ghost face and I was about to kill her. I'd be like, let's find out if you're 100% cotton. He's trying to kill her not with a knife in this film. He's trying to kill her with the Creed album. Yeah, with Creed. Let's get, let's get the music video song in the film somewhere, guys. Creed was, uh, Creed was in the first movie, too. Yeah, they were, they were like the PAs on set. No, they weren't. They were they were on the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I know they worked on it. Your stab games. So he was wait wait a minute. Cotton Weary sex stab games. Wait, so Cotton Weary has done this ruse before, <laughs> where he pretend like pretends to like stalk her, like even though he was framed for something like that in real life, he he enjoys it that much that he. She references it. Like, it's happened before, many times. Wait, did that person just mimic Cotton's voice and did Cotton really show up? I want that voice. That thing is, like, way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. So he does have a voice changer that... 
He's oh yeah, okay. I remember this film. So he one of the biggest problems with this film is that they have the voice changer that can change the voice into other people. <laughs> it was it was way ahead. It was, it was definitely cool. not a yak vac like I had back <laughs> in two thousand. A little, I had a little twelve dollar one from uh, like the little Halloween store. Uh, yeah, mine was it, it, bad. Mine was like eight bucks. It was the Nickelodeon's Yak Vac. You could say like four seconds worth of dialogue. Um, I am thinking that that's Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone Two behind there with the the voice distorter he used to order his hotel room in New York. Yeah, the killer's been following people around, recording word by word, and he's putting them together. I'd like a large pizza, please. Cheese only. It's me, the father. I'd like to have sex with you. It's me, the cotton. Hey, since we're talking about Home Alone right now, uh, he opens that shower up and Uncle Frank's in there singing. <laughs> Get out of here, you little pervert, before I slap you silly. The cool <laughs> The cool Oh, he's gonna go get little Petey with the with the gimpy leg or whatever. Man, Cotton's one hundred percent. Hey, Cotton's one hundred percent jacked in this film. See, this is how if they were gonna kill, uh, you know, my favorite my favorite character Dewey, this is how they should have done it in Scream Five. They should not have had him in the movie like they did. It should if they were gonna kill a main character, they should have done this again and done it better. Not where like he they've been playing sex games with their girlfriend about bad, terrible shit that's happened to him. I guess that's how he's worked out his PTSD. <laughs> Cotton, I don't want to play any more of your stab games. <laughs> right? I want to know what the stab games are, look like. I need know? to see... You know, I, <laughs> yeah, we need, to, we need to know more on that. We need, we need her to elaborate. Emma, they probably made a movie of it to Misty Mundane version I wonder if this is after Labor Day because Cotton's wearing all white how can we make this character's murder look even more gruesome let's just put him in like the Godfather's clothes <laughs> they, they absolutely dressed him all in white so the blood would show up better I bet that laptop over there is the one at Halloween Chris Rex was playing on he has the laptop opened uh, to the website where he can buy more cell phones. Wait, but I'm, I've got plot armor. What the hell? I should have took out... You see, he's got all kinds of expensive stuff. Like, is he even bought the plot armor that he didn't get the extended warranty? Or the, or the protection? I never liked him anyway, so. No, he, every scene he was in previous to this movie was him trying to get Sydney to do an interview so he could make money <laughs> off, oh. the de- off the death of her mother. Wow, a shitty movie's title just hit me right in the face. Whew. Okay, you know what? You're right, Alex. It does make more sense that he did a sex game. I mean, he looked what he was, he's been milking it for everything. Yeah, so why, hey, not, why not milk it literally? Slashaholics, uh, pay close attention right there. Sydney actually has a seen eye dog for this film, so she can work her way through the plot. <laughs> Blinded the, the, by the plot. The dog is leading Sydney through this mess of a film. Wow, Sydney came into some money. Oh, she. I guess you know, I, almost getting killed makes you rich. All the movie rights. Well, you know how much insurance money she probably got from being sliced, sliced and diced and slashed in two previous installments. Come on, son. Yes, yes, stab insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's largest dresser. There was like eight drawers on that, and for some reason, it was right next to the front door because everybody has a dresser right next to their front door. Just so everybody knows, there was supposed to be two killers in this movie, and they made the decision late, late 
<laughs> in production to change the mind. So there's plenty of inconsistency for us to pick at. Yeah, and just so everybody else knows, uh, Nev Campbell was on like set actually filming for like probably 30% of the days they actually filmed. Like she, this is the least available she was for any of the films. This, hey, Josh, this must be during COVID, man, because Sydney's working from home. Oh, God, the shittiest character in all the movies that hasn't grown one inch in five films, like, is, like emotionally or anything. Every time she has, like, an epiphany and acts like she's going to change, the next movie starts, and she's just the worst again. Not only has her character not developed or grown in these films, but her bangs apparently also receded. Look at those bangs, dog. What kind of haircut is that? Oh, I she don't tried know. doing that thing where you pull it down, you know, and you just cut it when it's wet. She looks like I up. did when I was like four and I got my hands on the scissors and I like hid behind the big wooden TV in our living room and I cut off like half my hair before my mom caught me. He's from TMZ. He wants to talk to you about your relationship with David Arquette. There's a man. There's a man outside. He said he's from a beauty school. He wants to talk about your bangs. <laughs> Hey, it's Dr. Sexy or whatever the hell's name is. It's McDreamy. It? McDreamy, that's it. Yeah. Dylan McDermott. Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. He was on Grey's Anatomy, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't Grey's Anatomy still on TV? I have no idea. I've never seen a second of it. I mean either, but I'm almost positive it's it's going into like it's 37th season. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like doctors with like arthritis, their hands shaking. <laughs> it's I'm I'm being serious, man. It's like still running. I think that's a that's a weird uh, ad thing right there. Purina Dog Chow, the official dog chow of Scream Three. <laughs> Maybe it was just a happy accident for Purina. Maybe they didn't actually pay for an ad spot. The way she held that bag, come on, man. I'm sure they had a commercial film where, like, a bunch of dogs got killed, you know? It's like, what's your name? Why, why are you asking? I want to know if you're a good boy or a bad boy. <laughs> Damn it, Cotton, I don't want to play any no, no more of your, scream, <laughs> your, your stinky stab games. I do like this song. I've used a version on the channel before for intros to narrations for freddy hey was that peewee's bike it sure was <laughs> wait wait are those guys real cops or are they actors dressed as cops are they security or is that is that really lance henriksen Absolutely. or is that an actor dressed as lance henriksen they're on a set so i don't know he's talking uh to everybody about setting up a new game uh called hell world Ah, gotcha. Oh, and is that guy, that guy that did, like, one movie in his career, or is it a person dressed up as somebody that did one movie in their career? Oh, case closed. He's got us there, boys. They're all upset, but this would actually be the greatest press ever for a film. Everybody would want to see this film. It's like, oh, is that the movie where the person actually got murdered off set? Exactly. It's, it's so weird that Hollywood grows a conscience every now and then. Okay, so this gal right here, right there, she, uh, Slashaholics, she's the one playing Sydney. That She was the one that was supposed to be the other killer. And it, it's obvious to see as the movie plays out that that was the way it was supposed to go. How, how did he say LL Cool J? LL Cool J. He sounded like, uh, oh my God. I can't think of his name. I don't know, but I loved him on the Cosby show. He was like Rudy's best friend. He was awesome. Wow. Uh, you, can, you know you're getting old when you can't remember one of your favorite actors' names. He was in uh, Batman Returns, you know. Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed up like Batman? 
Uh, Michael Green. Keaton? No, the guy that says, Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed up as Batman? The guy that talks weird. One of my favorite people. Christopher Walken? Christopher Walken, yes. That guy said it like Christopher Walken would have said LL Cool J. I think Master Evil has finally broke your sanity. I, I, I love him, too. and Not not Master Evil. And I can't, I can't believe I forgot his name. He's I like can tell. Yeah. I can tell you love Christopher Walken. I, I, everyone okay. can tell. It's You're going to not be laughing at this when you find out my brain's shutting down. <laughs> It's because all that hair on your head, Josh, is weighing down your mental faculties. You're, you're, <laughs> right. slowing, you're slowing down. You're, the hair follicles won't allow your brain cells to operate at full capacity. The lady playing Gail constantly looks like she's uh, used the stuff from Death Becomes Her, and like her body, every bone in her body is broken, but she's like trying to hold it up. She was the main vampire in Blade Trinity, and I loved her in that movie. Paul Levesque was good in that movie. Yeah, Triple H had like a tiny little dog, uh, silver teeth, and he like pre-evolution, like kind of towards the tail end of uh, DX. I guess they play stab games too. Like he he's he's like dating the chick that played his ex-girlfriend that's that's like the definition of not letting go man Dewey's character is just like his direction from Wes Craven in this film is just to be pissy and jaded <laughs> just go out there and be as pissy and jaded as possible yeah just be as pissy and jaded as possible and I want that mustache to look as much like John Waters as possible <laughs> Less okay, do we? Can, we got to have more like John Waters, less like Hitler. We need it to grow a little more, okay? It's awfully close. Man, that definitely looks like Dewey. The great casting. Oh, it's like twins, man. It's, this is, yeah, a, is this, cats talking right now. Yeah, is this, is this a double mint gum commercial or is this Scream Three? You know, the, thing I, the one thing I loved about the Scream movies was the character of Dewey. And now after seeing Part 5, which you made me watch, yeah. anytime I try to watch a Scream movie, all I can think about is how some little tiny girl disemboweled in, like, in the front, like knife in the back, knife in the bottom, and somehow I, I just can't. just can't. Dewey in, Taking in, my the, Dewey de- joy away. <laughs> in the defense of the character choice they did, uh, how to kill Dewey in Part 5, Dewey gets jacked up in every Scream movie. He gets stabbed or just the shit kicked out of him in every one of them. Okay, then in part five, it would have been crazy if he never got stabbed or hurt once. That could have been better. Well, instead, they just went the full Monty and just murdered his ass. Gail is going to be the only one left standing in the series, and that's so sad. I don't and really I'm see... And your doppelganger. Dude, I don't really see Gail making it through... Six. I don't see how it's Good. possible. She should have. She should have been the one to die in five. Dewey should have been the last one standing when it was all over. Oh my God! They really. They. I forgot they went there. Hey, it's the guy from Freddy vs. Jason. Oh my God! Yes, it is. That's when Jason Mewes still had all his real teeth. He didn't have his dentures here yet. Yeah. He played a lot of stab games. Wait a minute. So the dad, is he just visiting or does he live with Sydney? That's a good question. He, he he actually just gets in the closet every night. That's how he deals with PTSD. <laughs> he ties himself up with his hands behind his back and gags him. And just stays there for like a week. <laughs> the, re- the reason he, he wasn't even like kidnapped by Billy Loomis in the first one, that he was just tied up with a gag in his mouth because he was playing stab games with Cotton Weary. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Was he was he like in the closet the whole movie? I don't know. Like, at, like like was she walking by her dad every day leading up to the end of the movie? You know, uh, maybe. But also, if he was if he was kidnapped, right, for basically the whole week, who where was he going to the bathroom? And also, did Billy and Stu like get randomly take the gag out of his mouth to give him water and food? <laughs> How did that get work? The extended version of Scream One. Yeah, I got a lot of questions. Lots of questions. Is that dog dead? 
No, it's just it's exhausted. The spring spring commercial. No, the dog is a. That dog is exhausted from trying to lead Sydney through the plot points of this film. She has a dream now where Velociraptor goes, Sydney? <laughs> oh, God, Mass Rebel's going to make us watch Jurassic Park 3 this year. Shit, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's Sydney's mother. All right, here's Maureen Prescott, everybody. She's never actually been in... Okay, well, no, I lied. Here she is right here in a flashback scene or whatever. But up to this point... She is the most seen character in the Scream franchise without an actual scene on camera other than a photograph. Because pure supernatural. Dude, she looks like, uh, right here, she looks like in Monster Squad, she looks like one of uh, Dracula's, you know, Tempter ladies that are gets uh, stabbed by Rudy in the final scene here. Look at her. Oh my god, it's Pamela Voorhees. Come to mommy. Mommy needs to talk to you. Uh, will you please, if you're going to try to freak me out, at least not make my windows dirty as shit? Because now I'm not only going to have PTSD, but I'm going to have to clean that. It looked more like, like she didn't wash her hands after a bad trip to the bathroom than put blood all over it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, Ooh, was cotton that, in your stab games? Well, yeah, cotton was just showing up for an orgy. Uh, no, was <laughs> what? So that was just her imagining all that. Yes, yes. Okay. Dream okay. and then imagining. Okay. So she's see what I mean? She could have been the killer and then been like, drop the blade at the end of part five. What have I done? Like, you know, her her psyche just snapped. Dude, there's no way Nev Campbell is ever going to let Sydney die or be the killer. I've seen so many interviews with her. That's the only way the series should end is like she's been gone after so much, you know, that. Uh... Oh, my God. It, the, I imagine behind that mask is a big old semi truck. <laughs> uh, Some people what? get that reference. The Emilio Estevez movie. Yes. What one was that called? Oh, shit, man. It's called Trucks in Stephen King's World, but that one's called Maximum Maximum, maximum Overdrive. Overdrive. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny, Jenny McCarthy. Just be the killer. Just be Dude, the Jen, killer. Jenny McCarthy is at the height of her powers right here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're practicing a death scene for Stab. And one of the stab games, apparently, uh, he doesn't use a knife anymore. He he uses a pair of scissors for this guy, because that's going to be a kill, right? See, the, that's how the guy should really die. If I if I was the guy, if I was the ghost face, I would see the special effects they're working on, and I'd give it to him for real. <laughs> and I'm psychotic. I just realized how bad that sounded. This is the... So the what, canceled. Canceled. Uh, we'd have to... We'd have to... Uh, be getting paid first of all <laughs> before we get canceled. <laughs> um, hey, so Roman Bridger, I'm gonna ruin the movie for everyone watching this. Uh, Roman Bridger, the director, is the killer, right? Um, it's one of the worst reveals since Friday the 13th, A New Beginning, like as far as a, a killer is concerned in a movie. What's what's the re- what's the reveal in Friday the 13th? It's Roy. It's the ambulance driver. Oh, part five. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, a new gotcha. beginning. Yeah. Isn't it called a new beginning? Yeah, I thought you, I thought you said the remake for some reason. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no. Gonna... And everybody at home after the, you know, they're in the theaters watching a new beginning. And they're like, oh, yeah, that ambulance driver that we literally saw in the opening scene for like a minute and a half. <laughs> of course exactly. it's him. I think they, it was supposed to be Tommy Jarvis and like they changed their mind, you know. Let's film a scene where that guy has a picture of that kid. Let's just take him the killer. Deborah Voorhees, the girl who's getting it in the woods, should have her own movie by herself. Like, just where she's just walking around wearing, like, nothing. I, I would have rather seen that one than A New Beginning. Uh, Fanboy 13 or whatever. Uh, she made that. She's pretty cool. Better get her for getting sidetracked. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be great. I'd be distra- I would definitely be sidetracked. No, I'd be distracted. 
Would you play stab games with her on the screen right now? Yes. As she is. Yes. <laughs> no problem. Twice on Sunday. Oh, oh my God. So Roman's the killer. And Roman is the only killer in this movie, and Roman is changing his voice to sound like Roman. Exactly. That's, that's what we're supposed to believe here. This this would this would have been the girl playing Sydney. Yeah. So this is terrible because we know the way they edited it, it's Roman, but they fucked up. So that was Roman using a voice changer to be Roman. <laughs> it can be and, himself. And how- Exactly. And how many rewrites would a movie actually get? A movie like this, how many, would it really have that many rewrites to where, you know, a, an actor on set would be like, another goddamn rewrite? Yeah, it would be. I'll tell you why. Because this movie was brought to you by WWE Studios, the same Got studios it. that brought you See No Evil. Uh, Vince McMahon was rewriting the script before, like two minutes before they shot scenes. By the way, that was Roman walking in the front door. So if it had actually been him on the phone, he would have been outside, like walking by other people in the studio saying, because I'm going to gut you like a fish. Oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, and, and if the police were any good at their jobs, the the cell phone signal ping would have pinged like 10 feet from the studio where she got murdered. So he Clone couldn't phones. say he wasn't there. Clone phones. Sydney oh, okay, knows. So it wasn't Roman. It was him. It was it was security guy. Sydney knows all this though because she's got that dog, you know, to lead her through yep. this stuff. Oh, the dog is magical. That's what helped her see the vision. Wait a minute. Another plot Wait a minute. Me. So Roman was in here the entire time making the phone call, then, because it's just one killer. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> it looks like a knife from like. Hatchet Part 6. Okay, that's pretty funny. Uh, I'll stop in a little bit inside. You would have, <laughs> hey, you would have thought that uh, that would have been fake glass since we're in the prop department, but it was actually really glass. It wasn't sugar glass, it was real glass. How funny would it have been if, like, the guy went to stab her and she, like, looked back like, what the hell? And he had accidentally grabbed one of the fake knives, too. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been absolutely amazing. <laughs> nice shirt, Let's baby. cut this movie down to shit. Uh, let's delete all the stuff that makes it kind of stupid. Okay, you want to leave in the Jay and Silent Bob part? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's That's got a horror movie written all over it. I had seen that, like, J- Kevin Smith had done a favor for Wes Craven, so he was returning the favor by doing a cameo in this film. Like, I saw that somewhere. Well, he, he, did, he, he did it a big favor. He really made it a legitimate horror movie. I it's, love him, by the way. I love the guy. Oh, I love guy. Kevin Smith, too. Um, but as soon as you see him in this film, you know the tone is completely jump the shark. Exactly. How weird would it be to be a real couple that had split up in real life? <laughs> you know, Dexter and uh, the girl that played his sister. Uh, I can't remember the name of her name. Jennifer Yeah, they were, they were married in real he, life, weren't they? He cheated on her during season five with Julia Stiles. And, <laughs> I mean, crap. And they Dex, did, like, the guy who played Dexter? Together. Yeah. Here's a piece of trivia for you. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell, the couple that's in the tent and they get killed by the, like, road sign... Like, she gets split in two through the tent. You there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Okay, so that couple having sex uh, on on screen, they were actually dating in real life and broke up, like, a month before they were cast in that film. They just happened to show up and get casted randomly as a couple. That's that, hilarious. Yeah, they, were, they had broken up previously. They didn't even know they were going to be in that movie together or have sex on screen together. That's crazy. Dude, he's like, don't use the phone. That would be really awkward, though. I'm surprised I didn't come up in our, like, four-hour interview with Adam Marcus, which is an amazing interview if anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah, that was the one time Master Evil wasn't a complete dick. 
Adam just left us there, so. <laughs> you told me, you, you said follow me up the road. What the hell? He's had so many stabs. He's got like such, he's got like brain damage. Dewey is like 100% committed to, he's selling that limp from the nerve damage. And that's the pro wrestler in him right there. That's David Arquette at his finest. He's selling it, Josh. Hey, for all the shit he pulled and pissed people off for in the 90s, you've got to watch the documentary, uh, You Can't Kill David Arquette or whatever. It is really good. He goes out in the indie circuit and does a death match and almost bleeds to death, but finishes the match. Yeah, they would have had to change the title of the film because he almost actually died. That's why, yeah, yeah, you're right. (laughs) I think that's why they got the title that they used was You Can't Kill Him, apparently. Yeah, the the, the title when they thought he was going to die was You Can Kill David Arquette. Yeah. And, th- and then Scream 5 is like, hold my coffee. Hold my beer. He got some... Si- hey, man. In retrospect, though, going back to 96 when he was cast as Dewey, uh, who knew, you know, that he was going to get five pretty good paydays out of that series? Yeah, Like, if you'd take that if you were an actor, right? I would, but he has always been the heart of the series. I'm telling you. Well, not, anymore. Is not, not, a, work. not anymore. Not anymore. He's dead. He, the parts in Scream 5 he was actually part of, I enjoyed. Once he was killed off, I it, I lost any enjoyment I would have had in the movie. And I think part six is going to suffer because they, they really messed up with that shock. It was shock for, this, for the point of shocking people. I don't understand why they had such a like a tight turnaround for the production of scream six like why 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 did they feel the need to make it so fast after part five did did you have that thought at all they're like everybody looks really really old let's not wait that long again okay hey is that the tick is that the tick yeah that's patrick warburg or no not patrick war patrick warburton's the klingon um patrick something he's the guy he's uh the guy uh in family guy he's the guy in the chair yeah, that's the, yeah. You have the name right. It's is it Patrick Warburton? I'm pretty sure. Unless I don't, the comment section kills us for it, but I don't think it is Patrick. It's Patrick. So I don't know, dude. Check um, it, check it out. This guy's not only a director; he's a very good actor when he gets uh, questioned. Dude, McDermott's hair here. I don't know if that's regulation for the police department. No, like that's, I don't know. That's, that's Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> or whatever the hell, McDreamy. I'm not. I'm not buying his hair length here. I like. I don't know if that's. Uh, FBI issued hair or detective issued hair. He's got like a um, horseshoe baldness underneath the wig there. <laughs> that guy actually looks like a cop. He looks like the little brother of the of Vigo from Ghostbusters too. It's Vigo. <laughs> why did that guy who looked like Vigo's little brother seem so bitchy to McDreamy? <laughs> like, why was he so ass hurt right there? <laughs> I mean, just imagine being like a normal looking dude working around that guy every day. You'd always feel less than. And plus, that guy's a good foot shorter than him. It's headlines Alex and Josh in love with McDreamy. <laughs> <laughs> man, that's talking just... about how, how sexy he is. <laughs> man, did you guys see this, the, the Slash Track season three premiere? That wasn't funny at all, man. It's just them talking about how, how sexy Dylan McDermott is. <laughs> Patrick Dempsey, god damn it. Is that his name? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's so sexy that I can't I I don't can't even get his name correct. I can't think straight. Oh my god. See, he's a director and a really good actor because Dewey's a really good cop and didn't pick up on that. Boom. He's arrested. They, they got the data from his cell phone. Totally done. Movie's over. Especially since there's only one killer. Exactly. Explain how shit happens whenever he's not around. <laughs> he can't. He can't. That this movie is fucked. There's no way. There's no other killer the way they chose to do it. So he can't get out of this. He's the only one. Exactly. If he doesn't have a partner, how the hell does he get out of it? Right. He can't. He can't. It's. And I think he needs to worry about two things here. He needs to worry about getting out of this crime, and he also needs to worry about getting out of that fucking hideous shirt he's wearing. Oh. 
There's the there's there's the red herring right there, the whole cell phone thing with the cop right there, the detective. So stupid. He he's caught. There's no other killer. I've seen fan theories that um the person actually helping him that they never introduced on camera is uh really Stu. I've I've seen that multiple times. Well, how the hell is he he's in the cop car right now. There's no way he's getting his first phone call until they've gotten him to the police station and talked and grilled him. He's not and even booked. They haven't even they haven't even offered him a soda yet or a cigarette. He's not making phone calls right now. That scene where he just they he just borrowed Dewey's phone was to make it look like, you know, the cop was the second killer. Yeah. And I think it even gets brought up that this phone call is made from Dewey's phone. So yeah. How do you get you the go. phone? How do you get the <laughs> there phone? There you go, people. And if he if he did if it was a clone phone, how did he know the detective had Dewey's phone at the time when he okay, made his so phone call? He's you <laughs> so he he's doing this phone call right now from booking. With, he, with the cell phone. <laughs> and he also has the voice changer right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is fucked. And in other news, another couple have died in uh, apparent stab games. <laughs> Cotton worries at it again. Um, how how did the person who made this movie that when they edited it and stuff did they just th- how did they do this? They didn't look at the finished product and think none of this makes sense. The same reason they rush part six. They know the oh movies can be God. shitty as hell and people's going to go see them. This is insane. This is insanity. No wonder there wasn't another Scream movie for a decade after this. I need to make a phone call. Okay, there's the pay phone. No, I'm gonna, I want to use my voice changer in this cloned phone. I yeah, have I have to use the phone that's been cloned. I have to. Because somehow I know that uh, your detective partner has the phone that I've cloned here. And I need him to be a suspect. <laughs> I mean, I need to call my mom. I don't know if they did have the tick on their side, man. They would uh, be kicking ass. This movie was also probably brought to you by Cam- the fine people at Camel Cigarettes. Is he, like, biting? He's bitten the butt down to, like, like chewing on a straw as he's smoking it. <laughs> That's how I smoke my cigarettes. <laughs> he needs I, a cig- I shoot and I smoke at the same he needs time. A, he needs a cigarette holder like the penguin. No, she said yes <laughs> before I saw her picture. I want to know the backstory behind that chair, that couch back there, the the red one with all the like circle cushions. Okay, Josh, is Gail just going rogue here? What is she doing? She she doesn't belong on set anywhere. Like she nobody invited her to any of these things. Or to Apparently, this house. Apparently she's she's not worried about Dewey. I think she's just jealous. Does she carry the shitty trailer they gave Dewey back there? Yes, it was like the size of the trailer my dad actually lives in. <laughs> like like a little fifth wheel. Which ironically, Slashaholics, in Scream Five, Dewey lives in a in that same size trailer <laughs> later on in the series. <laughs> lives in it. Okay, you're not creepy at all right now, Gil. Well, this is a felony. She's stalking here, brother. That motherfucker's in there playing stab games with someone else. No, that's not a Photoshop picture <laughs> with like a green screen behind her. <laughs> Whoever photoshopped that was like I bit did it. As fast as they fucking could, man. Like, they just... Okay, that's good background. Okay, I don't even care that the scale doesn't make sense at all. Spoon! I'm sorry, the tick thing. I just can't let it go. He's actually working for uh, Cotton Weary. He doesn't know Cotton's dead. And he grabs random females for stab games later on in the week. Oh, my God. That's become the logo, the slogan of this episode. (laughs) Stab games. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, Dewey, are you going to play stab games with that bitch later on? She's, she's just a carbon cut. Co- like, she's not me. It's not really Gail. It's untraceable, except for he has it at the police station right now. Because there's only <laughs> one fucking killer, and he used it. 
and the police station didn't take any of his property from him when they put him in a hole. Well, the only way he Roman Bridger's getting out of that, if he's the only killer and he's using the same cell phone again, is if fucking Jesse and Walter White show up and use a magnet to pull all the FBI evidence against the fucking wall. Because <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't happening, son. Boom, oh, magnets, bitch. Yeah, mag... Stab games, bitch! Science! <laughs> Yeah, because she doesn't even look that good in these. There's, like, so many better pictures. Why these? More excellent Photoshopping, boys and girls. Unless I'm the killer. Exactly. That's why you did the little side-eye thing. The, the picture has to say copy. That way people don't think it's the actual original picture that is on a piece of printed paper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gail's pants. Gail's wearing red leather pants. Uh, which came in handy that uh, Scott Stapp from Creed was on set uh, writing and recording the soundtrack for this film because she just borrowed his pants for that scene. With, <laughs> with legs wide open. Oh, <laughs> with, legs, wide open <laughs> with legs wide open. Playing step games. <laughs> Under the plot, the plot points. <laughs> Left my plot armor at home. Oh my god, if the killer killed him with a spoon, nerds everywhere would rejoice. I mean, that would be an amazing death for him. This is around the time they did, like, the six-episode run of live-action before it got canceled. Did he play the live-action version of The Tick, too? Yes, yes, on Fox. There's a new live-action one on Amazon that was really good, but, yeah. He did played he? him on Fox back in the day. Did he do the voice of the cartoon, or was that a different person? It might have been a different person. I don't know. Maybe that was Dylan McDermott. No. I'll give you one. No way. <laughs> no, Dylan McDermott was in uh, American Horror Story Season 1. Okay, so that <laughs> killer right there, since Roman Bridger is being... Still in jail. <laughs> still in jail. That was supposed to be Sidney's uh, character in the movie Stab doing that. Exactly. Okay, so she just kicked the shit out of the tick. So that's not that's believable. I'll tell you what, she she also stabbed him in the back. That's why Joe's paralyzed. Um, <laughs> Joe, uh, the the director was at the station. Okay, all these jump scares are too much. I'm about to have a heart attack here. That uh, wasn't he was even a that, he's, dude. Can I have gotcha. a cup of coffee? And that last was, one wasn't even a jump scare because I saw the guy on screen before Dewey pulled the gun on him. He's like, call Peter Griffin for me. I know how, I know how he got kill, man. He asked that, that the dumb detective, if he could get a cup of coffee, he's like, sure, I'll go get you a cup. He's like, yeah, but I need it from Starbucks down the road. There's a girl there that makes it. You do that. I'll give you all the information you need. And the guy wants to give him the coffee. And now he broke no, no, um. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So here's the gal who's playing Sydney, running out there with everybody. So she just killed him and then got out of the costume and went right back to the party. Yep. Okay. This reminds me of Clue. It, Dude, it's, this is all like from Clue. Everybody running around the house. All of a sudden, Tim Curry shows up out of nowhere in a butler what, outfit. What does the butler do? I butle, sir. So Gail has been through two previous really, really hor horrific situations with murderers, and she doesn't even carry a piece. <laughs> doesn't have a gun. <laughs> hey, so... Hold on one second. Is Roman sending fax, faxes on the plot from prison? Yep. From the police fax machine? <laughs> and he knew that the guy would have to go back inside of the lighter to uh, read the uh, the script. Oh, I thought he was going to say whoever smelt it dealt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's no whoever smelt, smelt it. it. Boom. 
So he, the, 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 the screen killers in this one are so intelligent, man. They knew that they would, they would need that Zippo lighter in the kitchen to read the last page of the script. Because if he had ran outside, the whole plan would have been, you know, out the, out the window. I saw people on Twitter like two or three days ago um, praising this film and basically saying that it's the best one in the franchise and don't at me. And I was just thinking, I'm, I didn't respond, but I was just like, this is insanity. This is insanity. It is. Okay, so there's Roman, right? Or the girl, because but she was just with the girl, so it's Roman, but he's in jail. I can't get over this, Josh. I cannot get over this, that, that it's one killer. I can't. I, I can't. think it, it was either going to be the chick playing Sydney in him or that detective in him. And they just changed. Or Stu? <laughs> well, no, I've seen Wes Craven. It was supposed to be the girl playing Sydney. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, the way they're trying to trick the audience here with red herrings and stuff. Like, that's There's... what they done so far there's no way this is the worst scream movie hands down yeah let's just stand here and gaze into each other's eyes while the killer is obviously nearby is that her real hair can we take a second out i take a second to look at her hair is that real is no, that how her wig. hair it's a wig they took some of it for dewey's mustache <laughs> see she looks like she's got the Death becomes her stuff, and she always the way she's standing, like she's either drunk all the time, or like trying to like put her broken bones back together, like they do in the movie. Yeah, Cor- Courtney Courtney Cox actually hit her in the head, and her head flips all the way around, <laughs> to, like to where her at, her head is looking at her ass. See, that's why girl right there, Sydney girl, is so like she just got shot in a bulletproof vest like six times. So she would be hurt like that. There should be bruises on her, though. <laughs> she looks more like she'd be playing, uh, the, uh, you know, the mom from part two. Ends up being the killer. What, is there a fax machine under the car? No, Pennywise actually left that photo of Marine Prescott underneath there. It was by a drain. We all... Suck down here. Okay, hold on one second. I got another question. So, this guy is a big time detective. Okay, he is a big time detective. Dewey's not even a cop anymore. Okay, Dewey is like helping out on the set of that film. And Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers, is just going rogue, like doing detective work on her own. Why would he invite them right into his office? (laughs) <laughs> dun 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 so I was trying to do the law and order music I can't do it they could dun, be dun. <laughs> they could be suspects themselves yeah and he's like letting them around everything yeah there's the little spider web uh, <laughs> evidence wall back there and he's a detective in Los Angeles and he's working one case <laughs> yeah, exactly his caseload would be just jack- and there's this guy pissy and bitchy again He's not that handsome, Dewey. He's just not. I don't know. Is that a threat? Is he hitting on me? I I think McDreamy was hitting on Dewey. (laughs) Was that a threat? Wait a minute. They just had that altercation with the bitchy look at each other, so he comes back for more. Yes. Why do it twice in, in like, five seconds? Josh, that's why the runtime for this film is fucking two hours, because they kept redoing the same shots over and over again. And all the actors kept doing uh, stab games? The uh, uh, Offset, they were just yeah. exhausted from playing stab games with each other. So Nev Campbell, ladies and gentlemen, here she is for, like, scene two of her... Uh, presence in this film because she was on set for like eight minutes for this entire movie. I th- she was in Scream 4 for like a lot more than she was for Scream 3. Oh, Scream 3, she was filming something else. She was totally like Party of 5 or something. She was doing something completely different. 
Like, I she really, wasn't even available. I know you hate to hear this, but I really hope one day I get to riff on part four and five. I really hope so. Of Scream? Yes. Wait. I'm not supposed to say I like watching shitty movies, my bad. I'm giving you a hard time. I know you're a big Scream fan. Well, I wouldn't mind riffing five. Uh, four, though, is a no-fly zone for me because uh, I like that movie. And don't even bring up Return to the Oz ever <laughs> about riffing it because... That one actually scares me, the the headless person in the rollers. Queen so Mumby, Queen Mumby. What if the, hey, what if the wheelers, what if Gumby and Pokey were, were on roller skates like that? Would they terrify you even more? Yes, yes, they, they, that would, that would, that would be it. The garbage pill kids behind them. Hey, Josh. Hey, Pokey. Stop it. <laughs> like Wayne and Garth. Give me me gold. <laughs> <laughs> I need me gold, Pokey. Stop it, man. You're freaking me out. I'm the leprechaun. Stop it, man. When I found out that Warwick Davis played Willow and the leprechaun, it just blew my mind. We got to do it quick, though, because I've got to get back to party five. What about part two? Can we make time part two? I just told Scott Wolf uh, that I was actually going to get lunch. I'm not even supposed to be filming this right now. <laughs> you know who they? You know who Part Five could have really used that they hadn't fucked up in Part Two? Jamie Kennedy. He fixes it. He fixed Tremors. So. Oh, are you Tremors Two? Was he in Tremors Two or Three? No, he, was in, he was in Tremors like Five and Six. When they had ass blasters, the ones that were flying in this, the the air. Was, that was Part Three. Part Five and Six, man, they're way out there. Uh, He's Burt Gummer's son. Oh, okay. shit. Here comes Jamie Kennedy's part in the movie, right? There's Pee Wee's bike again. <laughs> I've been sitting here waiting to jump out and scare y'all. You can't, 17 year olds can't be shot, people. That's like the one age where you're protected from gunfire. Don't shoot. I'm 17. <laughs> 17 my ass she's got to be like mid-20s at this point dude celebrating the 17th anniversary of my 18th birthday and i knew that the the ghost face killer would haunt you for the rest of your life so i made this movie how is it possible that he's physically aged (laughs) since the last vhs tape they had of him he's a killer He's, he's dead right Oh, my God. He just said shut up to him. Like, he heard him. That is A&J and Silent Bob. Oh, my God. No ticket. Last time it only took you five minutes. That was a stab game. So, you have a cameo of a legacy character in this movie. What's his paycheck situation for this scene right here? What do you think Jamie Kennedy got paid for that right there? Like a fifty dollar Walmart gift card. <laughs> <Free> <laughs> and fifty on set. Fifty dollars back in like two thousand wasn't too bad. You're dealing with the the concluding chapter. Well, you were way off, dude. It would have been funny if like he had another tape in case there was a fourth and another tape. In case there was a remake, like he covered the whole thing, you know? You're dealing with a reboot. <laughs> You're dealing with a re <laughs> You're dealing with a reimagining of a sequel that's also a reboot of a trilogy. You're dealing with a part two for the third time scenario. <laughs> like Halloween. Dude, I'm almost positive the TV he's talking on right now that I had that TV growing up. It's one of the TVs that the uh, guy was stealing in Pumpkinhead 2 from the mail. I love, hey, I love how they're watching this Jamie Kennedy tape. This is just Jamie Kennedy ranting into a VHS recorder, like a camcorder, back like before he's dead in 96. Yeah. I, love, I love how they're like seriously 
taking notes on it. Like, this is exactly what Roman Bridger is planning and thinking. This is exactly what's going on. It's the Bible. <laughs> so, like, during the events of, of, of Scream 2, he's like, huh, this might happen again. I need to make yeah. a tape in case I die. Yeah, he's in his dorm room. get out of town. <laughs> I'll make a tape. Like, seriously, Alex, was she just waiting in the trailer until they walked past, you know? Guys! <laughs> it's just like a video game. Like, when you're playing a video game and you run into characters and they give you exposition, yes. plot points. Yeah, that's that was basically what that was. Her sim showed up. <laughs> come on, schnell on, Dewey. He's like, number three, the past will come back to bite you in the ass. <clears throat> number four, no stab games. If somebody gets st- approaches you with some kinky shit and a ghost mask and a knife, just say no. If this is and if you're watching this and this is like the fifth time it's happened to you, be <laughs> careful because they're going to kill David Arquette. It doesn't matter who he's playing, but especially if he's playing Dewey, he's not going to make it. If you're watching this and this happening for the sixth time, they couldn't get Nev, they couldn't get Sydney to come back and be in the movie because she. By this point, she's become too huge in life. And she's trying to move on. Like, he has rules for every sequel. She didn't even... Like, she's trying to play Gail Weathers on screen here. And she didn't... <laughs> she didn't go full method, man, because she didn't commit to the bangs. <laughs> she totally blew it. What a hack. Oh, my God, that chick... Her, the way she moves just drives me crazy. Not in a good way. It's like, it's like death becomes her movement. She drives Josh crazy. He just can't sleep. He's so disgusted. He's in too deep. She drives him crazy. But he doesn't feel all right. I hope the rodeo clown sings that to you all night. Dude, that Britney Spears album that Crazy was on, I, I bumped that jam back in <laughs> high school. Woo! Hi, I am Gail Weathers. I have absolutely zero credentials to be here in the archives. <laughs> and that I lady's have, in the picture going, are I have you sure copy. that's not the original? <laughs> I have this copy of a photo that I'd like to show you. I have absolutely no reason to be here professionally. Oh, the official cigarette of uh, Spring 3, the Marlboro Lights, before they were called Marlboro Silvers. Or do you want me to go kiss my brother? Carrie, Carrie Fisher's still pretty attractive right here. Yo, Weather said she was working on the case with the police. I love how they, that picture says copy. That has like, been my favorite thing the whole time, is if somebody's going to mistake that picture for the original. <laughs> Yeah, because back in the old days, before you could afford a Polaroid camera, you, the, the really cheap Polaroid cameras actually just printed out, like, white pieces of paper. Yeah, that picture looks like it came out of a Game Boy printer. You know, but just bigger. <laughs> this is the internet, boys and girls, before the internet existed. <laughs> a file cabinet. Internet archives right here. Good God, this movie's long. We are 59 minutes into this legendary classic uh, entry in the Scream franchise, and there is still another 57 minutes left. The guy that makes the stab movies. You know, the guy who later on does Hell World. Problem, movie's over. They figured it out. Stab 3-7. <laughs> Stab 37, is that what that said? Uh, per, it, so that's the production studios. It said Stab 3, whatever, 7. Uh, <laughs> they need to go right to that production studio and talk to the producers about how fucking ridiculous this movie is. Oh, wait, that's Stab, not Scream. Excuse me, because Scream's supposed to be real life. <laughs> it would be funny if somebody had messed up and put Scream instead of Stab on there, you know, because, like, they obviously they really... Fucked up this movie. Yeah, they don't okay, even that, care about they don't even not, care about the editing at this point. That that person's 
not trying to scare her. They just, they had to get on top of the toilet and squat <laughs> to get anything to, to function. Well, sometimes if you have to take a shit, dude, um, but you got to get the gravity and some real G forces going. So you got to get on the toilet and really give her hell. Well, there's a scene that was supposed to show you that she was the other killer. Like she yeah. was actually getting ready to kill her, but she's like so new at being a killer. <laughs> she's like, shit. She's absolutely was supposed to be the other killer. Like, boom, right there. Like, and we know she was supposed to be the killer. So how was she explaining this? She wanted to take it for, uh, to make money, but there was like a hundred costumes there. <laughs> I thought I could sell this for money because it was used on screen in a movie that's been shut down and we'll never see the light of day. Wish I could play a stab game with you. There's a reason that this chin is pointy on this mask. No, it's stage seven. What the hell? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So she's... How did she talk her way out of this? I think it was that she just... Since the movie shut down, she wanted some souvenirs. Well, then why is she stepping on the toilet? I guess she is a nervous pooer. <laughs> she's... I, I can't pee around other people, so I can relate to her. So, okay, no, she, you, cl- you cleared it up. She's only done, like, two of the kills. She's still new at it. So, you know, she she just fumbled. She fumbled the ball on that one. And she and it, her whole plan was to leave her hairbrush behind because she knew that Sydney would pick it up and try to bring it to her because Sydney's just the hairbrush picker upper kind of person. Kind of like oh. the, uh, the the Zippo in that one scene where the house blew up. They knew that that's what that person would do. So this is a this is Stu's house, right? From part yeah. one. Yes. Oh, wait, that's her house, isn't it? Oh, that was Stu's. That was Stu's. Gotcha. That's Stu's house right there, and then her house is across the street. It's because it's all in the lot. Yeah. I wonder if uh, her friend Rose McGowan. I wonder if it's uh, screen exact. I wonder if she's still hanging from the doggy door. Did she even die? I mean, it kind of cuts away, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, she's dead. The garage would have broke, by the way. <laughs> Especially back then. I don't think it would have had enough force to like lift her up and break her neck. Yeah, and her her, her chest would like weighed at least a hundred pounds. God bless her. Tatum. She was like one of my favorite characters in the like she was a smart ass. She was like a badass. She's like throwing beers at Billy and Stu down there. If I could forget movies, I would forget every sequel to Scream because I believe part one is like a perfect slasher flick. I really do. Oh my God! There's Creed on the wall. Jesus. Christ. Oh yeah, they, that, they negotiated uh, <clears throat> that image into the film when they decided to take on the soundtrack. And yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Scream One, the first Scream, they didn't need any sequels to it. Um, and it, when they started going the movie route with Stab, I hate it. It makes no sense. They, this they whole movie doesn't. It, it makes no sense. I don't they even went, know what the hell's going on. They screwed themselves over by turning it into, like, a franchise within a franchise. They, like, wrote themselves into a corner. Uh-oh, somebody's going to pop up there for some PG-13 stuff. I love how in Part 5, uh, the daughter, Skeet Ulrich's character, just happens to know what he looked like whenever he was 18. Or she must be seen as ghost, you know? <clears throat> Where's, where is the Indigo Girls poster that was in her room? She opens the door and her dad's in there, gagged and tied up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the same closet, dingus. It doesn't matter. He just alternates closets every night. <laughs> hey, somebody playing Stu or Billy comes up the window. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm just really trying to get into character. You, you were killed off and stabbed one, though. I know, I'm back. That was a bad move by the killer. I know. He didn't think that through. Um, it went right through a table, man. He 3D'd her ass, Dudleyville, Dudleyville style. I'm pretty sure. What is a juggalo? <laughs> All right. Hulkamaniac. Got- he power bombs suckers into thumbtacks. <clears throat> Sabu your mama through a coffee table. 
Oh my god, I love a scary movie when they're like throwing like pianos and everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So this is definitely the girl, not the brother. I really believe this is the girl. Well, if you wanted to play stab games, you didn't have to throw me in the bed. You could have asked if you could get in there. Dude, I don't even think, if this is a movie set, that wouldn't even have been a real bed. That would have just been made up to look like a bed. That killer's dead. That the killer would have just landed on wood. <laughs> like cakes in movies, you know, it's just like a big old uh, rectangle of cardboard with frosting yeah. on it. <laughs> that killer's dead. That is literally just a wooden frame, probably, made to look like a bed. Oh, wait, the killers knew that she had been having hallucinations about her dead mother, so... They knew that was happening, so they planned this part. So she's she's having like a psychotic breakdown right here. Right? Okay. This is like some real Norman Bates stuff. She so could end up being the killer in one of the movies. And she had kept hearing her mom's voice. Oh, here's proof there's two killers, people. Those dead bodies that she's looking at covered, you know, with crime scene, you know, towels or whatever, <laughs> sheets. That's me and you at the end of this film. Master Evil finally got us. Season three premiere is also the series finale. That's it. He, he nailed it. Oh, I know who killed him because it's all the liars. <clears throat> That's Casper asking if he can keep Nev Campbell. Can I keep you? <laughs> He's been playing. Uh, he's been playing a stab game. You see the way he's running? Yeah, oh yeah. He's just. He's got a major erection in his pants. He can barely run. I saw Daisy Duck. She's a real Disney character. Oh God! I saw. I saw Gail's bangs. They're horrible. I don't know who told her they look good. We need to fix them, do we? I showed up and did this shoot. <laughs> Why did I show up and do this shoot? Okay, so there's the gal in the back walking up to the scene here. So that was obviously Roman Bridger. So no, it wasn't the girl. I thought he was still at the jail. Or did they let him go? See, that's another major problem with this film. It's like, where, where has he been? Uh, Roman Bridger's oh, been right. lit off scene, off, off screen for like 30 minutes at this point. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's what I was like. I'm sitting here thinking, wait, you're right. He's like gone for half the movie. Yeah, he's, where is he? We haven't seen him. And I'm going to give you some surgery. <laughs> he's wearing those glasses, those novelty glasses that you get in boxes of cereal. He's not even paying attention to her. The ones where you can see behind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like looking at people walking behind him. He's not even paying attention at all. What she's saying. I had this under my pillow. Oh, we got this another copy. excellent oh, copy. Oh, a copy. A copy. Yeah. My bad. We got another excellent copy of Maureen Prescott. Okay, here he is. We haven't seen him. He's back. Really? You don't know what a pariah is? Oh, so he probably just thinks it's like a fish that eats people. So he's just going about his normal life, having meetings and stuff, to not be suspicious to the that guy. As soon as he got arrested, he would have the scarlet letter in Hollywood. They wouldn't even want him around the studio at that point. He'd be a pariah. What's a hundred percent. He's OJ at this point. I think it's suspicious. He didn't know what a pariah was. <laughs> Do you know? I really need to know. I'm filling out my resume. Do you know how many actors work for me? Anybody? Dewey has so many button-up polos, and, like, seriously, he got all these shirts uh, at Aeropostale. This is around the same time. I'm surprised he's not wearing puka shells or a hemp necklace. 
all his stuff is Aeropostale circa 2003. <laughs> Aeropostale. Yeah, check it out. So he's he's talking about how you know how many actresses have worked for me. Uh, you know how long I've been in this business, and the only movie posters he has up are Stab One and Stab Two. <laughs> yeah, and he's got he 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 did work on on uh, let's see here Robo Public Servant there behind him. Did you see him? <laughs> Robo Terminator? <laughs> Robo Terminator cop. <laughs> That robot behind him looks like the Krang in the T- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot CGI cartoon in, like, 2013. Oh, yeah, my kids watched that when they were little. It looks like the Krang. It sure does. Or uh, Lance Henriksen's uh, body when you find out he was a robot in uh, Aliens. Man, Lance Henriksen's career really kind of... Like, started out real hot, and then later on, he started, like, okay, all, all of a sudden, he's in Scream 3, and then all of a sudden, he's, like, in Hell World, and then he's, like, in just straight to Redbox movies, and he's, like, in Hallmark movies. Then he's in, like, you know, independent $100 budget movies, <clears throat> and now Nicolas Cage is trying to be just like him. He's trying to catch up. Dude, Nicolas Cage um, takes pretty much any role because he is terrible with money. He, like, um, bought... Didn't he buy, like, the first ever copy of Superman? I know he did that, but he also bought, like, the Elephant Man's Bones or something, or was that Michael Jackson? He buys weird shit. He named his son Kyle Lowe. That's all I know. Yeah. It, you know Nicolas Cage was supposed to play Superman at one point in oh, the yeah. Tim Burton Superman movie? The, the, the script for that would have actually been a badass Superman movie, but that not, picture they have of him not has with been him doctored, as, and it, it, the suit wasn't finished. I've got a whole topic... But that's for like a different day. Like, not yeah, there's a, there's a documentary. Well, that would have been a slash tr- slash tracks film, uh, Master Evil. We could watch that Superman, and he would with have broke him as Superman. Yes, but the script itself was actually really, really good for the, the comics. But um, uh oh, he just said something to uh, make him the suspicious as the, one of the killers again. On, hey, on those little post-it, those yellow post-its on his computer, it says, uh, get bread, uh, hair gel. It's just not even cop stuff. It's just stuff he needs for his house. <laughs> Call Shirley, or whatever yeah. her name was. The name yeah, was. from Freddy's Revenge. <laughs> He's got the number, ghost face killer, right there with the number written down. <laughs> cell phone one, cell phone two. <laughs> no, and, and in another note, it says, don't tell people you're, you're ghost face. <laughs> Remember, don't tell people you are the killer. There's like there's like ten note ten post its up there. There's like every number for Cotton Weary. One of them, hey, one of them up there says uh, how to clone a cell phone. <laughs> and then he's got the Killing for Dummies book right on like right on his desk. What is she? Did you know about your what? Your mother. Oh. Oh, he's 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 filling the spank bank right now. <clears throat> in in the series, they end up getting married. Then I started seeing dead people. A little bit of romance right there. There might be some stab games later on. McDreamy's getting a little, uh, a little. He's wanting to play some stab games with uh, Mrs. Campbell there. <laughs> on his on his cop belt right there, he's got his cuffs. He's got his gun. He's got his clone cell phone. <laughs> he's got a he's got a twelve inch dildo attached to it for stab games later. Showgirls. <clears throat> wow. Supposed to if you don't love your job, man, get a different job. Life's too short not to be happy. <clears throat> she just said precinct really weird. <laughs> it's like it's like Courtney Cox is reading the script like, what is this word? There's no way 
that any of them even knew their lines. There, pro- there's, there's someone hanging on the screen or on the windshield of that car right now with cue cards, because <laughs> this movie was written in like one day and then rewritten and then rewritten. You can see the reflection of the guy holding on for dear life right now as <laughs> Dewey's pretending to have a phone call. And and somehow the killer knows exactly what uh, Ned what what Sydney was talking to to the detective about because that was the killer on the phone, and he he just said everything they talked about in their conversation and you know said I'm with Detective Dempsey or whatever. Okay, so he was they're they're going to the killer's house. Here he is, and then that's supposed to be the other killer. How how did how did they know everything that Sydney talked to the detective about and that she was with the detective? <laughs> the only way they would know that is if the detective was the killer. It's a, see what I mean? Like they the red herring stuff, they they made it too stupid. They didn't even think it out. They thought people no. were so stupid they wouldn't question it. This movie is terrible. Like it is like written on a cocktail napkin at happy hour at the Ramada. Like seriously, this is awful. Ramon or whatever right there has become a Chris Kattan's character from a uh, house on Haunted Hill. I'm going to look for a way out. I'm going to look for a gun. I'm going to look for some liquor. That's not cool. That's Dewey. You guys want to come? I, I play a wicked stab game. Was that, was that too dirty? I'm sorry. No. Oh, you're just I, not gonna laugh. We're not laughing at jokes anymore. I get it. No, we're not allowed to. People in the commentary, people in the comments below said we can't laugh at our own shit anymore. <laughs> I sometimes we'll try to keep our eyes open. Yeah, sometimes I just laugh at stuff that we say so we can get mean comments so I can post it on the podcast later on. <laughs> like, please be a dick. Do it yourself. I'm just going to go down here with this bottle that was empty a while ago, but somehow I'm still drinking out of it. What, what dad? Weird dad? Like, like weird dad? Like a werewolf yeah, like, dad? Like a werewolf? She said weird. <laughs> the killer is a mannequin. I just figured it out. It was mannequin number two. Yeah, the killer is like the mannequin in the Nickelodeon show from like 1984, today's special. So he only comes to life when the when the stab mask is put on the mannequin's body. <laughs> it sounds like an episode of uh, Who's Are You Are You Afraid of the Dark? Dude, I, that that reference I just said, I bet you like nobody's gonna get that. If you guys get that reference, leave it in the comments below. If you ever saw the TV show Today's Special, where the mannequin had a hat. And he says, hocus pocus, alamotocus, and becomes, a, and becomes a human being. I dug deep for that reference. The killer's inside out boy and refrigerator raider. Let's dig oh. through some other small references. And Stick Stickly reporting here from the set of Stab 3. Oh my god, this is the best part of the movie. Nobody's talking. <laughs> Did you see Ramon downstairs looking at that coffin? Was he was that is that where he decided? His name is not Ramon, it's Whatever. Raymond. Raymond. Roman. It's Roman. Roman. Okay, not Patrick Ramon. Dempsey and Dylan McDermott. <laughs> Roman. Romaine lettuce, I got it. Razor Roman. They find all that stuff and Sydney's dad gagged. <laughs> There is no technology that, like, I don't even know that there's technology to this date that can change your voice identically to somebody else's voice, let alone 2000. I think Robert L. Jackson just got really, really good at voice acting, like, way better than he already was. Because uh, some of these scenes, it sounds just like Nev Campbell, just like David Arquette, you know, almost like the actors were doing the voices for those scenes. The the killer for this film is actually Mel Blanc, the guy who did the voice of every cartoon character in the 50s and 60s. I swear, if there's a comment saying, Josh, that was the actors doing the voices, I'm going to be like, whoosh. (laughs) 
That doorway, man. I remember. Do you remember seeing the preview for this movie and seeing the knife being thrown at uh, Dewey in the trailer? When no, he's the top of the I stairs? don't. Nope. I thought he was going to die in the movie, and I was like, no, if they kill him, I'm done. Even back, even back in, what, 2000? Is that when this came out? Yeah, my junior year of high school. Yeah, even back then, I was like, if they kill Dewey, I'm done. I, I probably won't watch part six. I'm just going to ask you how, how it goes. I'm going to send it to you, whether you want to or not. Yeah, some good movies today. I did get some good movies today for my birthday. Thank you very much. Master Evil, but uh, Master Evil's a, hey, Master Evil's a real asshole. You sent me these movies, but I have nothing to watch them on, so I just can look at, look at their cases. And I sent you the whole Jason set, but he replaced it with Leprechaun in Space. At yeah, three and four. Okay, she just saw the dead body and checked his pulse. And reacted as if he was dead. How did Roman, did I get it right? How yes. did Roman know how to did he take like, some kind of drug or something to stop his heart or slow it down? I don't know. And what if that this okay? So this gal right here, who's supposed to be playing Sydney, if she's not actually the killer, like they intended her to be the other killer, they can't explain why she's acting so crazy, why she's jumping out of places, jumping on toilets, trying to hide herself with the screams crap. She's just a psycho. She's she just, just weird as shit. She disappears, and then all of a sudden she's back at the end because they filmed the scene to change the story. Yeah, this this is a mess. This movie is a mess. Yeah, that right there was, that's the scene they added right there, actually, I think. This is the one they shot later. Her death scene was shot to, uh, to, to, to axe that part out. You don't even see Ghostface Dragon right there. They probably just had somebody. Hey, she, hey, they had to film that scene like two or three times because the actress uh, playing the gal who just died right there, she was so happy that she was going to be removed from the from this film that she was <laughs> smiling. So they had to like, no, you're dead. You, it's sad that you're dead. You're not happy. in the home. Man, Dewey's just getting his ass kicked. Just classic Dewey here. Okay, I've had a giant face in my head before, and I'll tell you about it after. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, I couldn't hear anything you said right there. I said I've had a bass break on the back of my head before. I'll tell you about it later. Were you playing stab games? <laughs> Actually, yes. Oh my god. That was some uh tuck and flip WWE. Well that 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 was a uh, uh, Alex. Just taking out the trash right there, dude. Like that guy stood no chance. No chance of him. Okay. What? Explain to me how if, if Roman is the only killer, how he went from upstairs to downstairs. <laughs> makes no sense and also why does roman have stairs that lead to a sex dungeon those are the or like a cauldron that those stairs are only in castles hey now they've done they set up part six they could use this that there was a second killer the whole time and it's like they can find somebody for this movie to show up and why does that the producer guy at his house have that's not roman's house that's the old that's lance, Hen, lance henriksen's house why does he have Soundproof closets. <laughs> Shoots her. Okay, so he's fi- that's seven bullets. How many bullets does this gun hold? It's a, it's, it's a nine shooter. <laughs> it's a six and a half shooter. Okay, so it's Roman's birthday. It says happy birthday, Roman. Did they say that earlier in the film? Because I didn't yeah. catch that. Yeah, he's at he's at Lance Henriksen's house, the whatever his name is, and it's supposed to be Roman's birthday. He could have killed Gil right there. No grabbing. 
Yes, yes, do it. Oh, when I was a kid, I hope the first time I watched them. So I'm really hoping this one does that. I would rather us have that faith than have to finish this movie, Alex. There's a, you know, we're in luck because there's another 31 minutes of it, and that's like two episodes of DuckTales. Everybody's dead. <laughs> 30 minutes of, of what? For Roman's birthday, Lance Henderson actually promised him the, <laughs> to fill in the plot at the birthday party. That's why he was so excited and he was drinking champagne because he's like, oh, this fucking movie's going to make sense. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't get to open his gifts yet. That's why this movie is still a fucking mess. So is he using the voice changer here again? No, I think it's really her, but he thinks that he, he thinks he's like, wait. <laughs> It's me. I mean, it's me. <laughs> why doesn't he just ask? Why doesn't he just ask her what his kink is? She exactly. know. There you go, Alex. Okay, so it holds seven bullets. You really don't remember that from the trailer? No. Um, he's an ex. That I don't even think that would knock him out. That would just. I know. Be ir- <laughs> It would just uh, irritate him. It would be annoying more than anything. The vase to the back of the head uh, did way less damage than that did. That, that's crazy. Pizza party. <laughs> they got they that... solved a hundred cases that month. <laughs> <laughs> they have a calendar with. Uh, they put a star on uh, their little calendar every time they solve a case. <laughs> and if they get thirty stars, they get a pizza. Party. They get a pizza party. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese is out there. Uh, you know, handing out slices. <laughs> the the stickers on the calendar are just little little ghost faces. <laughs> Pidney Sescott. That cop, the second cop that was behind the pissy detective. I in the entire film, all he's doing, he's walking behind one of the detectives. He doesn't say anything in an earlier scene, and then the next scene, he's eating pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he does in this film. Whoa, he had a Polaroid that was like a production still from part two. It's like oh, wow. it's like who took the picture of Jason for part five when the cops are looking at it. I can't believe that there's not a picture of Jason from Crystal Lake in this freaking folder here. Well, I mean, he, he had her head circled on the first picture of her. It's like, this is what a head looks like. He's practicing for being, a, you know, he's an alien masquerading as a cop. That's what's up with all the post-its. He's trying to, like study human behavior and like what things are supposed to actually be like one of those one of those notes says when going to the bathroom there is no number three. <laughs> oh man so he's roman bridgers down in the basement now i guess like on the phone again oh he's wanting wanting her to come there because i see I want to play a stab game. How would he even know if she brought someone or told someone after she gets off the phone? Or like right now, she could just signal because he's the only one. Does he have a camera on her right now? There's two killers. That's why. Because that other girl probably would have been like watching her while he was there. Stupid. I know. He would never know. I'm how does he so I know you hallucinate? How, yeah, how does he know that she's having hallucinations? Robert L. Jackson is an amazing voice actor. I got to give him that. He is, but I'm totally distracted by the fact that this movie is terrible and the plot is just completely fucking this movie over. Oh, did you see that bulletproof vest? It said RCPD, Raccoon City Police Department. No, that that her looking at it though is like such a foreshadow, <laughs> such a foreshadow. Why? Why, why else did they show the bulletproof vest? Why is her hair 
that little that little tuft of hair over her eye. Why is it? She's like prom ready right now with that hair that, like that. That's all that was left after Gail cut some of her hair to t- to glue to her forehead for bangs. No, she's do. But Gail has bang envy here. Like, act what hair is actually supposed to look like. Oh, cops always keep an extra gun laying around. I, I know that from all my years. And oh, she's been to a lot of police stations, I guess. Why does why would the detective have like a thirty eight special, <laughs> like a what, like a two shotter, like prostitute protection gun right there <laughs> for women of the night? He uh, confiscated it from Master Evil last time he arrested him. When Master Evil comes to play, <laughs> his gun only has two shots today. <laughs> There's a dead guy by the pool. I'm so sleepy, I'm starting to drool. I'm starting to fade away. (laughs) I'd rather be listening to Creed today. (laughs) Now suck my dick. Well, I mean, (laughs) come inside. (laughs) We'll see how well you follow directions when I give you a safe word, Sydney. You want to play stab games with me, huh, bitch? Everywhere. He set up a metal detector anticipating that she would bring a gun. Because the, because the other girl was at the police station. I'm telling you, that's what the, that's what this scene was. She was following her. Oh that that doesn't even look like the same gun she had. I think she found another gun. <laughs> that gun wasn't even a real gun anyway. It was just a cigarette lighter. It was just a novelty cigarette lighter. The movie can't end until you come inside. Go into the house. I know it's a horror movie, and that's a bad idea, but please go. We started season three off with the screen. I'm screaming in my head. How are you holding up? <laughs> you doing okay, Dewey? How do you know it's a he? That is so sexist. Exactly. Exactly. So sexist. You hit the knife right on top of Dewey's head with that one, Josh. <laughs> what? Why do they never shoot him in the face first? Like when Dewey dies in part five, he kind of deserves it. He should have known to do headshots. You know? Dewey Dewey jacks up the killer big time in that scene. He's a major hero. He's pulling off wrestling moves, dude. Arm bars I, and stuff. I would have rather him died in the opening credits. I'm sorry. If he if they were gonna kill him, they should have done a cotton weary with him or Gail. Part six, I think it's gonna start with Gail's death, uh, and I, I I might actually watch it if that happens. <laughs> I hate to burst your bubble, but I've seen like still like still shots from the production, and she's like in a multiple multiple still shots. And there's no Sydney. Not that I saw, but that doesn't mean that she didn't negotiate. Yeah. You know, maybe she'll be a surprise. Who knows? But no, there's not supposed to be one. Any oh. Sydney in the film? He sure is acting like a killer, man. He he's not very professional, is he? The way he's like just a cop, just putting his gun away. If 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 he was really in his copley duties. Well, he'd have backup also, and he wouldn't have that fucking scowl on his face. <laughs> she just knocked herself out. Best part of the movie so far. <laughs> you mean to tell me that Roman is stronger than McDreamy? Really? Well, not like with Muchismo for like getting babes, but like physically it looks like, yes. Roman got kicked right in the nuts. Luckily, he put on some nut-proof vests. <laughs> he's got a he's got a cup and a bulletproof vest. Why does this, why does Roman just stab Gale and Dewey right now? Using Dewey and Gale to get her hair, but why? Why? You know, after he's got her, after she showed up. Get her. Josh, are you recording your lines underwater right now? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is he drowning you? 
right now. I backed up a bit. <laughs> the movie is making me back. Oh, we're gonna see. Hey, Josh, I can't hear you at all, buddy. Looks like you're ripping this one alone, buddy. I think I am, man. It sounds like Master Evil is murdering you in a dunk tank right now. He's trying to. The movie is just engulfing me. Come in here. Play your stab game in here with me. Can you imagine having to clean this house? Like how large this house is? So who filmed... Is that Judith Myers? Is she actually seeing this, or is this just like film that Lance Hendrickson happened to have? He just happened to have it, I guess. <laughs> I'll tell you what's the matter. This movie's still got 20 fucking minutes. That's what's the matter. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why? He's already, he's already disguised. Why did he need to disguise himself from the disguise? <laughs> And how did he know about her hallucinations? <laughs> Who's the killer? It's me, Robert L. Jackson. I'm done making these fucking movies. You're all dead. I like it how in movies when people get shot with bulletproof vests, um, they, they, they live, right? They're, they're yeah. fine and everything. But like, if you actually got shot still and you're wearing a bulletproof vest, you'd still be pretty fucked up. You'd have broken ribs. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to breathe. He's totally fine, though. That's right, Sydney. We ran out of people that could actually be the killer. That we invented a, a sibling for you. <laughs> Lamest reveal ever. Like, nobody cares. His tombstone is going to be easy to to produce, though, because, I mean, he dies on his own birthday. Right? <laughs> so you just only need one. You don't even need a dash at that point, do you? No, just put like, you know, like quotation whatever the, marks. <laughs> yeah, whatever the date is and whatever the year and the year, I guess. Like it can be like 11 20, uh, 1972 to 2000. <laughs> you don't have to put like the month and the day. Wait a minute. So he, Roman Bridgers got like surveillance footage of his, her, their mom banging Cotton Weary? Like. Oh, no, that's his dad. What? Before he was born, he set up a... He, he hired a private detective to get that footage. And this is like 95 when he... Because if Scream... The first Scream came out in 96, and he's responsible for Billy and Stu, um, that is like the greatest camcorder footage ever from like 95. <laughs> Oh that, oh, that was footage of her banging uh, dude's mom, dude's dad. I get it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Sydney, the overpaid actress for coming back in shitty sequels. What is Sydney? this music? It's like it's like happy Disney music. <laughs> I don't know. This is terrible. He looks like he just took too much coke. <laughs> He's right. got a massive nose, a head rush, and a massive nosebleed. He is tripping balls right now. Look at her. She is not wearing a bulletproof vest, and that she is not wearing one. She pulls out Sydney's dad. <laughs> He's in the closet again. Ooh, that'd be cool to find out he was the second killer. Playing stab games. So he's he Roman Bridger's pissed off that Sydney was the one that their mom like took care of and was a mom to and he didn't really get a fair shake, but he's like a Hollywood director now. He's doing pretty well for himself. I just figured it all out, man. Now he's got that futuristic exchange. The detective is his partner. It's alien technology. He just played Sydney threatening kill the person who just died, and that's how he's gonna frame her. It's futuristic technology, man. The alien brought it. 
that robot behind Lance's desk is the one who's responsible for all this. Like, wouldn't the cops, if, if this technology he's using is available, wouldn't they know that could be possibly not her real face? Is he the only one in existence? I have no idea, but it was definitely Sydney in the study with the candlestick. Oh, you're right. You've got, like, such a better life than her. What a terrible, what a terrible way to find out you have a brother. <laughs> right? I Next. I like did a shitty family reunion or something. Next, this on is... Maury Povich, your long lost brother is going to be revealed. If he's this psychotic, how has he been able to contain himself this whole movie? <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, seriously. Like, you'd see him... He, evilly cackling at some point or just having crazy <laughs> thoughts to himself at some point. Like, you know, just walking along thinking nobody can hear him. Just give it time, Sydney. It's all going to reveal itself. What'd you say? Uh, what? Huh? N- nothing? <laughs> going to get your ass, Sydney. My, my earbud fell out. All I heard was eat your ass, Sydney. <laughs> Master Evil gave you earbuds, huh? Yeah. Wow, things have really taken a turn for the better for you in season three. Well, the first season he gave me earbuds like the like the hearing aid that guy had in Freddy's Dead, so it yeah. kind of sucked. Nice hearing from you, Carlos. Oh God, we're gonna have to do that movie. I gotta shut oh, up. Oh, mommy, not my ear. We already did that movie. We did. He's gonna make us do it again. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Stand back! I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I want out of this franchise now. Oh, yeah, there was two other people in the house. Shit. I really should have ha- had a partner, Alex. So he, so they know how to pick locks now on Victorian-style doors, huh? With a broken pair of tweezers that he used to short-circuit the entire house, and not just the, the area that would have the fuse would have been controlling. Uh, you short out an area, it wouldn't short the whole house out. It would just be the fuse for that section of the house. Well, wiring was different in 2000, first of all, Josh. Oh, okay. Okay. God, his job in this film is just to get his fucking ass kicked. That is the second time he's been laid out by Roman. Somebody from the future just got tired of fucking Grey's Anatomy. (laughs) He's going to have major, major CTE issues later on, dude. You can't take that many head injuries. So... He wanted a real personal kill, so he decides to shoot her. With a gun from 1927. <laughs> okay, There's I'm... Two... Yeah. I wasn't aware that that gun was able to hold two bullets. Huh. And I don't care how old the gun is, and even if you're wearing a bulletproof vest, she was shot high on the chest at point-blank range. <laughs> it's pretty, Yeah, that one probably would have went through her shoulder. He's like, damn it, now I'm going to get killed because I hurt her. Shit, Sydney, tell him I didn't hurt you. I don't want to die. <laughs> Before you die, Sydney, can you let them know I didn't hurt you so I don't die? Am I seeing things? Am I hallucinating? Because apparently I'm connected to my sister's psyche. God, I should have hired a partner. Wonder Twins power, activate! <laughs> shitty movie. <laughs> Form of shitty movie. What is that? So, Gail Gail and Dewey, for the last 20 minutes of the movie, are just running around this mansion in the dark? Doing nothing. Like, they were tied (laughs) to a chair. Like, doing nothing. They just used uh, their voices, you know, from other parts of the movie where they said Sydney, and just played that. They didn't have to show up to, to film that day. Wait a minute. He has her number programmed in as Sid. <laughs> and I just shit my pants. I know, he looked like he was taking a fat <laughs> dump in his head. I shot you. 
They look alike, they talk alike, they shoot alike, they stab alike. They're siblings. <laughs> they had no idea they were siblings. 5-6 Central on ABC. <laughs> stab 3, oh my god. That's that's almost... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's got a bulletproof vest on still. He's like, I knew I should have paid the extra for the knife, the knife proof vest. He's, can you stab through a bulletproof vest like that? As if I know <laughs> from experience. Uh, dude, I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know. <laughs> can you stab through Kevlar? No, it wasn't Roman. I just really hate his movies, so I killed him. <laughs> yeah, he's not the killer. They were like, it was. It, they were like, it was Roman. No, no, but his movies are really bad. Yeah, he's horrible. As a matter of fact, he's making a mockery of my real life, so I decided to kill the guy who was in charge of the production. Now watch out, we gotta find Ghostface. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just really sick of these stab movies. I'm gonna kill the producer next. So he, so he held her hand as he died, or was, you know, showed that he actually cared a little bit, but he comes back to life to kill her anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was holding his hand. He, I don't think he, I don't think that he was his. He at her. He nodded at her, and like, he's got a bulletproof vest. I'm still confused. He just stood there and waited. Yeah, what he was like? Hey, he was literally standing there waiting for Dewey to shoot him in the head. So what? What are his legs like? Winding up like a car, like, like smoke. It- it's like in Power Rangers, you know, the bad guy could just kill him while they're trying to morph, you know? But he sits there and waits while each of them, Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor! <laughs> you know? Yeah, Goldar could have just slaughtered them while they're oh, they were morphing. <laughs> I think she only stabbed him twice, so the whole stab three reference didn't work for me there. That doesn't work for me, brother. Oh, God, does, that, does this scene mean that this movie's almost over? Because, uh, please... I just looked down at the time, and it was at 9-11 left in the movie. <laughs> Who's been watering Sid's plants and stuff this whole time? And feeding her dog, Perina. Are they all going to live together happily ever after? They might as well, man, because... <gasps> the dog prop- was the other killer. We're about to find out. Safety in numbers, dog. Safety in numbers, dog? Yeah, they might as well <laughs> live there, dude. <laughs> what would Macho Man say about this movie? This is one of the biggest shitters of all time, yeah. And uh, and I'm thinking, thinking, thinking that I'm never gonna watch this again, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, snap into a shitter. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my brother Lanny, the genius, he definitely didn't write this because a genius didn't write this. Oh yeah, dig it, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, thank you. That's pretty. Dewey, you ruined one of my copies of my books. I was hoping to sell that. <laughs> Damn it, Dewey. You, did you, like, cut through this individually, or did you use that super knife that went through that bulletproof vest? Exactly, man. That would be That is a task and a half. This movie's over. I'm just so happy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God there's not going to be another sequel until 2000. <laughs> 2008 or 2007 whatever part 4 2010 Sydney when she was with the dog a second ago like she walked off set got in a car and just drove away <laughs> she's being she's being carted off to party of five he's like ooh there's a stab game in our future Absolutely. had to get that in there one more time Oh, you know how he cut the little spot for the ring in her book? He stabbed he stabbed it with his cock. He just stabbed through the pictures, or through the pages. Homeward bound. <laughs> the incredible shitter. I knew I'd find you, Sydney. Oh, let's go, Shadow. <laughs> I'm a good boy, right, Sydney? That's right, Don Amici. So she didn't have the alarm on, obviously. What was my code again? Is that the guy she had the babies with? Yes, that's the guy she ends up getting married to. We never saw babies in the carriage she's pushing in part five, so she could be crazy and be the killer in six. Like the baby, this whole life. The babies that you see in the carriage are just uh, like I see any babies. 
Yeah. Well, no. It, like, in her mind, she just sees uh, <laughs> babies that have the head of Billy and Stu because she's oh nuts. The door opened up to the credits. The credits been trying to get through for, like, 30 minutes, but nobody would answer the door. So they just walked in on their own. <laughs> um. So Kevin Williamson, from my understanding, uh, didn't actually write this one. Is that correct? I don't know, man. I know I know he, he had a script. I think they butchered it. I saw Harvey Weinstein had something to do with the movie, though. <laughs> yeah, the Weinstein brothers were both involved in it. Um. And Harvey Weinstein's had a really great uh, life recently. He's got, got severe COVID in prison where he fucking belongs. Oh, yeah. The, the credits are even going to get it wrong and say that the detective was Patrick, was uh, Dylan McDermott, just to fuck with me. Nev Campbell was in this movie so infrequently that she only had like two wardrobe changes in the entire film. She's like wearing that green hoodie like the entire film. Why the hell did Scott Foley get higher stuff than Lance Henriksen? <laughs> higher credit there. Emily it Mortimer. Been, it would have been funny if they showed her in the like the costume from one of the cut scenes, and then it's like, oh shit, and like you see the words, oh shit, and then it's her in a normal clothes. She wasn't the other killer. Leave Schreiber. Uh, Patrick Warburton, I got it right. Yeah, I actually got I, it right. I, I thought so. Unnecessary appearance by <laughs> Jamie Kennedy. Not a special. Yeah, I, I can't even believe Wes Craven attached his name to this film. Like this is right up there with Swamp Thing for me. Like this is a huge swing and a miss for Wes. Yeah, I bet. I bet he he regretted it after. Um, uh, for sure. His last film he ever did was Scream Four. Hey man, here's some creep for us to rock out to while we're waiting for Master Evil to set us free from this. Yeah, in case you didn't have oh, a bad boys. enough time, in case you didn't have a bad enough time with the film, here's some Creed, Creed to shuttle your ass out of the theater with. The so which voice? Or the, it said the voice was Robert. <laughs> so, so he did do all. He did the sexy girl voice. He did Neb Campbell's voice. Waitress. I'm oh, glad right they there. got the waitress there. <laughs> said right there. Said Silent Bob and Freeberg. <laughs> <laughs> That guy in the goalie's mask was really pissed. Yeah, he was really pissed about something. Oh, wow. They got property master J.P. Jones. <laughs> He's the master of all property. What's your First, name, musical editor? Adam, okay? So what does a buyer do? Robert <laughs> Stover's the buyer. What What is that job entail? I was waiting for you to bring that part up. I was like, I know Alex is going to say something about the buyer. Well, He's what the, the hell? Got all the coke for the writing team. Yeah, I got. <laughs> he got the party favors so they could get through this production. Hey, there's the grips for the people playing the stab games. <laughs> Twenty-four frame video playback. Hairstyles really fucked this one up, Hazel. Yeah, who's the? That's the real villain of the franchise. The fucking hairstylist that ruined Courtney Cox's hair. Oh my gosh, she had an assistant too. So two of them fucked up the hair. <laughs> How does it look? Oh, it looks great. I knew it did. Is that so what the glad I hired did? you. <laughs> looks fetch. I, I want to become a lo- I want to manage a location. <laughs> Animal handlers. Um, so there's one dog in the entire. They needed two people to handle Shadow from Homeward Bound, apparently. He actually had partner dogs in the original cut, but they cut him out. Plaster foreman, Eugenio Quintaro. All the drivers that drove the actors the fuck out of there when their shit was done. I am the transportation co-captain. Get it right? <laughs> I answer to no one except for the transportation captain. Who a second unit for the staff games. I don't know, Doc. Can we mix this ADR? Bubbing recordists. Dubbing, dubbing, dubbing. <laughs> I feel like we're just getting a Creed sampler track, you know? I, I, I could hear this soundtrack and tell you what year this movie came out. And you don't tell me when the movie came out. Just let me hear the soundtrack. I'm like, boom, 99, 2000, 2001. It's one of those. Wow, the, the, the digital visual effects, all three of them were done by Pixel Magic. <laughs> it's, it's Pixel Magic. 
Well, there were some pixels, I know that. God, how many grips did they need? Oh, there was a lot of stab gaming going on. When you see how many people work on movies, you know, with the with the credits, it always makes me wonder how much money they made. Like what you know, you see the budgets like ten million, whatever, twenty million. It's like well, how much are the all these people being paid? Red Right Hand Part Two, man. They they wrote a sequel to the song for the sequel to the movie. They were just off by one. Click click is the noise right before you end your life after watching the movie. Suffocate is what this movie does to you. Is this the end? Is what you're asking throughout the whole thing? Yeah, I I, I got through the songs there. Oh yeah, the sound the soundtrack is available on Wind Up Records because in case you're not familiar with Wind Up Records, <laughs> you can go to their website at winduprecords.com. Just type in the word "shitter" and Scream Three will pop right up for you. You can order that on CD or Laserdisc. <laughs> Just send the buyer. The buyer will get it for you. The buyer will get you uh, the copy of the soundtrack you need at Wind Up Records. You ready to get the fuck out of here? Let's go. I was ready an hour and a half ago. Let's go. (laughs) Bet you didn't realize Scream 3 was two hours long. Oh, the sweet suffering you two endured. I believe this season when I make you watch a franchise movie, it will be all part threes. Who knows which shitty part three you will suffer through this season. How original. Season three, part threes. Wait, let me think. Are there that many bad part threes? Josh, just stop. Don't say another fucking word. You don't have to give this man any more ideas or anything. Just shut up. What? What about Tremors three, Jurassic Park three, Pumpkinhead three, Texas Chainsaw three, Silent Night, Deadly Night three, um, uh, uh... That's it, Rodeo Clown. That's Fucking it. No karaoke for at least two weeks. Well, maybe maybe one. I, I actually do really enjoy singing with you from time to time. But uh, we'll just see. So just shut the fuck up, please. Oh, and you know what holiday's coming up next month. You're thinking what I'm thinking, evil brother? Indeed. Mr. Flivel and I were thinking the same thing Sister Evil, and I believe Mother Evil is too. Let's do this together, family. Halloween. Oh, God, no, just stop. Art. I really, really don't like where this is going at all. Three. Oh no, not this Halloween film. This is the night Michael stayed home. Instead, you will suffer through old Irish man witches in business suits attempting to bring about the end of the world by sacrificing millions of children by using masks made of weaker stuff than the plot of this movie. (laughs) <laughs> this Halloween, I trick you, and it will be a treat. Until then, boys, happy Halloween. I'll make Mr. Flibble a very evil Halloween costume for the occasion, dear. Now, time for bed. Your prisoners need to endure their month-long psychological torture in peace. Okay, Ma, I'm coming. Psychological torture and peace. Peace. I mean, I mean it, man. No karaoke for at least... 
three, three to five days. I, I actually do enjoy it from time to time. Three to five days. That'll that'll really teach him, Alex. Three to five days. You started it two weeks. You know what? I'm about to lose the feed. Just hang in there. Just hang in there, brother. Just try to hang in there. I'll do my best, but Halloween 3, for the love of God, man, can someone just end this fucking show already, please? What up, Josh? What up, Alex? Slash track. What's going on? I'm busting in the damn head. I want to say a happy belated birthday to the whole cast of Slash Tracks, okay? Uh, Sister Evil was August 17th. Mine was August 8th, September 1st for Alex, and Master Evil is going to reveal who he is for anybody that doesn't know, and he's going to tell you his birth date. Go for it. August 13th. William Pattison, Eric Morris, the writer of the Camp Crystal Lake books, uh, which are a lot of fun and available here on the Slash Tracks Network. Happy birthday, Alex. Happy birthday, William. Happy birthday, Sister Evil. When's Mother Evil's birthday? Uh, her birthday is coming up in January. Okay, and uh, Rodeo <laughs> Clown is uh, Only March. Only in March. March. Hey, happy late birthday, Father. Uh, He's going to get a brand new barrel full of jungle juice and karaoke uh, laser discs. Well, we wanted to say something on uh, the podcast, uh, but this seems like a great time. Happy birthday, William. Happy birthday, Alex. Uh, everybody. And anybody else celebrating birthdays this month, happy birthday, and we'll see you on Halloween. And Uh, happy birthday, Josh. Thank you. And with Season of the Witch, uh, I think we're going to have fun riffing this one. Oh, yeah. It was in Season 4, so stay tuned. Yeah. (laughs) Season 4? What the fuck? I I haven't even had my agent look at the the rest of the episodes for Season 3, and the Rodeo Clown's already saying Season 4. I don't fucking think (laughs) so, buddy. He just wants us to watch Ghoulies 4. I don't, I don't think it's ever going He's probably got a big old freaking... He's probably got a big old uh, cork board back there with strings attached to, like, all the way up to season 7 and 8 planned. Oh, my goodness. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.